very easy to watch. Um, and you can maximize your screen for detail if you want to click in the right bottom corner. There's a little symbol there to uh, maximize the, the video so you can see the whole detail, but um, you shouldn't need to. Um, we're going we're gonna to focus on, for this particular one, we're going to focus on importing internals. Now, the process is exactly the same for importing, say, transcripts in Microsoft Word as it is for images, video, and uh, indeed audio. So any, any internal, uh, this process we're going to demonstrate is, is exactly the same for. We're going to start by creating a folder for our different types of data sources. So we're going to make a new folder by right-clicking here and we're going to call it interviews. We might have another one, say, for example, for audio files. This is good practice in the sense that when you're looking at data later on out of context that's already been coded to a node, uh, you can track back to the source if you organize your data into folders and use a naming convention. It helps you to spot patterns in a lot of text segments, perhaps, that are coded to a node, and you might see that they're coming from one particular source or group of people. So. To import our internals, the actual mechanical steps for this, we click on the interview folder. Um, this is the one we want to import into, and you see the name is displayed here, which tells us which folder we're in. We right-click over here, and we select the option Import Internals, and we see this dialog box. And then we simply browse for our files. So we browse to the folder. There's over 100 transcripts in this particular folder. But you can see we're using a naming convention and I'm going to just select nine or ten of them for the process. And I'm going to say OK and open and we're back to this dialog box. We now have selected our files. This option here, if I click it, will allow me to create descriptors in the properties of the file if I have that information at the top of my interview. You'll often see in qualitative interviews it might have something like interview with Ben, Dublin, October 2010 or other in such information. And if it's there, Enviva will place that information into the properties of the project, of the document, um, so that if I run a source report, say from my supervisor, that kind of information is included in the report. It's an aesthetic thing and not hugely important. This one is much more important. Because these are one-to-one -one interviews and not focus groups, we can automate the process of creating our all-important case nodes. Enviva will code each of these interviews, create a case node for it, and code the entire source to the case node. If these were focus groups where we had multiple people in a single document, then we would use the auto-coding option instead to create the case nodes, and we'll deal with that in a separate video. And finally, um, this one here would be important if you're working in team projects where you would be merging databases. Um, it, uh, it ensures that we don't duplicate sources after we merge. We don't need either of these boxes. This is the important one for this particular project. So we say OK, and you'll see Envivo will then immediately start to import the sources. And the little taskbar down the bottom here will show progress. And now you can see our, imp our data is now imported. We can open it, we can work with it, code it, edit it, or whatever else we need to do.